Hey guys, um, so I have the amazing Jennifer Burns on with me. Uh, we just did a podcast with Dr. Natasha McBride, which was awesome. We tried to get as many questions as we could. It's not so easy to interject with Dr. Natasha McBride, but uh, we hope you guys enjoyed our podcast with her. She had so much good information to share. Um, Jennifer is my amazing health coach. She's the best health coach I've ever worked with, bar none. So if you guys are looking for a health coach, I don't even know if she's taking on clients right now, but if she is, you guys should get in contact with her. But we wanted to comment a little bit about the video that we did with Dr. Natasha McBride. I think that we were discussing before, uh, particularly um, getting into die off, because that's such a huge component to healing. And we really like that Dr. Natasha McBride said that, you know, die off, it comes in layers. It's like peeling that onion and detoxing could take a long time. Whereas most health coaches who are completely full of shit will tell you that die off is within one or two days, or maybe you'll have flu-like symptoms for a week. And anyone who's sick realizes that that's not the case. So Jennifer, what's your take on, on that? Like what you said about die off and your experience with it? Yeah, it is something that there's a lot of common misconceptions about and everybody's going to experience, you know, it's, it is an important part of the process. We can't heal without getting this junk out of our bodies. And unfortunately, when, when these pathogenic bacteria are dying off or even heavy metals are getting out of the body, mold, parasites, as these things, ex yeah, as these things exit the body, they wreak havoc on our system. You know, they have to go out either through our our skin, our, our urine, our, you know, digestive system or our lungs, you're going to feel bad for a while until those things are out of your body. And so it's an important part of the process, but it is a painful part of the process that everybody experiences, especially if you're doing, you know, like the gaps protocol where you're adding in probiotics and what I appreciate about her is that she was saying that you need to go slowly with these things, because I think that we typically want to fix the body as fast as we possibly can. And so when you know that something is good for you and you know that you need it, we typically overdo it. And, you know, we all want instant gratification. And so we try to rush the process. And what I found with my family, myself and my clients is that you must go slowly and give it time. So like, like she'll have you start with like a teaspoon a day, or even some people that are really sick have to start with less than a teaspoon a day, even like a quarter teaspoon a day and stay at that dose for like three or four days and watch for symptoms and let your own body be the guide as to when it's time for you to increase your dose. So if you're feeling terrible and you have the flu and you're having migraines or, you know, aches and pains or urinary pain, if you're having any of these symptoms, then you're not going to increase your dose really high, right? You're going to stay at that dose until you feel better. And then you're going to increase your dose a little bit. So what I, what I really love about her too, is that she's a big proponent for letting your own body guide all of this stuff, how fast you work yourself through the stages of the gaps protocol, how fast you increase your dosages, how much, even like how much fat and protein, like, I really believe that we have to let our own bodies dictate those things instead of trying to use our mind to force the body into things. So I think that's a, that's a really important part that a lot of people miss out on. And I appreciate that she mentioned that. Yeah. And she also talks about like prioritizing your body, prioritizing certain things to detox, right? So if your body's overburdened yeah. with like mercury or your body's overburdened with, with oxalates, it's going to sort of get rid of those main pathogens first, right? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it comes in layers. So I know myself, I'll go through a month of like oxalate dumping and I'll feel like hell. And I, I could tell the symptoms. I could tell the difference of symptoms with oxalate dumping from detoxing other stuff, right? I'll get more urinary pain or whatever, or I'll drop, start dropping kidney stones or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it really goes through phases like that. Have you seen that with like your own clients, like in terms of them detoxing that it'll, it, you know, they might have a window where they feel great then they'll detox. And then a month later, they'll start detoxing something else. Is that something? Yeah, I think all of the detox stuff comes in windows and waves, you know, kind of like we talk about withdrawal and windows and waves. The same thing comes with healing where you might feel great for a couple of weeks and then you might feel terrible for a month. 
then you might feel good for a day and bad for a day. Like there really is no rhyme or reason to it. And I think another important thing to mention is that everybody wants definitive answers. How long is this going to take me? When should I do this? What does this mean? What symptoms can I expect? And you just cannot compare two bodies. Every body is going to have its own issues. It's going to have its own healing process. So, you know, like, and your symptoms are going to be different. My symptoms are different than yours, which are also different than my sister's or my mom's. Everybody's experiencing different things because your body knows what you need and what it has to heal first. What's the most important, you know, area that it needs work on, whether it be your immune system, whether it be heavy metals or oxalates or, you know, whatever your own personal issue is, that's going to be your kind of your weak link that your body's going to work on first. So you might feel worse in that area while you're going through healing. And that's another reason why a lot of people will start diets like gaps or carnivore, and then they'll stop and go back to something else because they think that it's not working because they actually feel work, you know, Mm -hmm. but the truth of the matter is you have to push through. You have to trust the process. You have to trust that your body can and will heal and that you will recover and, you know, just push through it. And, and it can be really hard to do that when you are doing all of the right things, you're following a protocol exactly, you're not cheating, you're, you're really doing everything you possibly can to take care of yourself and you feel terrible because of it. Hmm. But as she mentions in this interview, you know, that that's all part of the process. You have to be willing to feel bad while you're healing. And if you think about it, healing is always painful right? Like anytime that we're healing, whether it be from a cut on our arm or whether we have the flu or whether we're detoxing, we are going to feel terrible while we're in the process of healing. But the point of it is that we're going to feel so much better afterwards that it'll be that much more worth it. Yeah. And then you might, and then you might get sick again in the future from (laughs) detoxing more, right? It's just something that you have to go through. Unfortunately, a lot of people will sort of, I know I've, I've done this myself. A lot of people try to load up with supplements to try to to try and overcome that die off. And for me, it never worked. In fact, it just made me worse trying to take the activated charcoal and bentonite clay. And um, Mm -hmm. what else is there? I can't think of any others right now, but um, yeah. So is there anything in particular that you find helps with die off for for clients? Like, are there any supplements or any things that they could do or whatever? I have found that like detox baths can be really helpful uh, with Epsom salts, baking soda, that kind of thing. Um, Everybody might be different in the amounts that they can tolerate or even the length of time they can spend in the bath. Some people have to only do the foot baths if they can't tolerate soaking in the tub. Um, Walking, you know, just, it doesn't have to be intense exercise, but just getting out and moving as much as you possibly can is helpful. And the enemas, you know, my family, we've been doing enemas for a while now. I've even done kefir enemas. Like you just, there are things that you never think you would do in this world, but you, you do and, and you notice a difference. So I, I appreciate that she actually mentioned that because I did not get that from her. Um, I've been doing coffee enemas for a long time. And then when I started making all of this cultured dairy, I'm reading articles, you know, and researching on it. And I'm just like, man, this is so good. You can just literally implant that in there instead of like, because if you drink kefir, as as it goes through your whole system, your stomach acid is hitting it, you know, all of your enzymes and your gut are hitting it. So by the time it gets to your colon, you're not going to have as much of it alive and, and, you know, to implant there. So you go, like, I love that she says in the back door, you go in, in the back door and actually repopulate your gut that way. And it's a lot more likely to, to stick and adhere um, to your lining there. So anyway, I thought that was really interesting. And I do find that that's really beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. And I think lastly, I just want to get into symptoms a little bit. Maybe I should have brought this up beforehand, but um, Mm -hmm. I know with myself, like, you know, symptoms could sort of morph over time. Especially mm-hmm. like depends, like we talked about what you're detoxing exactly, because I like something like oxalate, something which I have a huge problem with that detox might look different from just uh, candida detox or whatever. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I could tell, tell you for myself, I mean, uh, a lot of detoxing, I mean, it's just a lot of the same type histamine symptoms that you might get mm-hmm. with, you know, um, protracted withdrawal from certain medications mm-hmm. or whatever. 
but I'll get like the rashes, like, you know, specifically mm -hmm. sort of around my sinuses. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll get the brain fog, I'll get the blurred vision, I'll get worse anxiety. Um, are there any like symptoms that you generally see more yeah. often with die off? Yeah. It will be completely different from person to person. Uh, what I found is that the histamine component is really common when you're going through these things, because as I mentioned, as your body's pushing these things out of it, they're going to wreak havoc along the way. And they're typically going to set off your immune system a little bit before they, before they exit. Yeah, so if you have, activated, yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you're having histamine issues, then it can be anything from allergies to skin rashes, to feeling like you have the flu, to migraines, to nausea, to bloating, to diarrhea, constipation. You know, I mean, the, the list is long nerve pain, you know, aches and pains, uh, joint pain, um, you know, the, the list, oh, even heart palpitations, oh, yeah. uh, anxiety, you know, depression, it, the, the list of symptoms is really quite extensive. And that's why I think a lot of times people get confused as to what they're going through, because your symptoms of die off and your symptoms of oxalate dumping and your symptoms of, you know, regular histamine intolerance issues, or even food reactions. The symptoms to all of those can be very similar. And so it can be hard to kind of differentiate what's what. And really, in my opinion, there's not really a big need to know exactly what's causing your symptoms. If you're doing the right things with your body, then you can kind of trust the process and know like, okay, I'm going through a period of healing. I'm going to feel terrible, but I am going to feel better afterwards and just kind of trust that. Yeah. And Jennifer, are you taking on any new clients or do I take up all of your time? <laughs> you do take up a pretty hefty bit of my time, but um, I, I am accepting some new clients. I'm a little limited right now, um, but I, I am accepting some new clients. Okay. Well, I highly, highly suggest you guys get in contact with Jennifer then before she runs out of uh, you know time on her schedule. I'm going to link her information below. Um, if that's okay with her, <laughs> uh, that's okay with me. yeah. Um, so yeah, so really interesting day. I've had two of the most brilliant women on my little podcast here with me. So I feel super fortunate. So Jennifer, thanks again so much for coming on speaking with, uh, with me today. And also for coming on speaking with, uh, with Dr. Natasha as well. Yeah. And guys, we, we tried to, uh, to pick your brain and ask as many questions as we possibly could, but you know, somebody that smart and that knowledgeable that we respect that much, you don't want to interrupt. You don't want to interject. Keep your mouth yeah. shut. <laughs> we also didn't want to take up too much of her time. So we kind of just let her spill her brilliance out as much as she could and, and soaked up everything she had to say. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. Yeah. We had millions of more questions for her, but Maybe there will be a part two in the future. So subscribe okay. and stay tuned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jennifer. I appreciate okay, it. Thank you, Scott. Okay. See you later.